All right, welcome into Off the Radar here on Sikkim 365 Radio, taking a look at some stories outside of uh, college basketball, college football, and let's start off with Jerry Jones. Uh, we do talk a lot of Cowboys, but uh, this is not something that we typically ask our Cowboys reporters. I mean, I know we don't go asking David Hellman uh, too often about, you know, all these extracurricular stories like uh, Jerry Jones and his... Uh, you know, allegation that uh, he got a woman pregnant and had a kid and hush money and all this other stuff that was going on. Uh, well, this paternity suit was filed. A 25-year-old congressional uh, aide uh, sparked a claim. Uh, has sparked a claim by Jones and Alec. Uh, like it gets very common. There's like Alexander Davis and there's all these different people that are involved in it. But basically, Jerry's calling BS on this. But the girls actually come back out here today and said, "No, it's not BS." Uh, but there's a whole thing having to do with a paternity lawsuit, and Don Van Natta's got a big report on it uh, that Jones accused, uh, has accused um, Alexandra Davis in multiple monetary extortion attempts, also accused Davis of delivering a draft of the complaint before filing it and asking whether he would like to make a deal that would keep the issue secret. Uh, so, you know, he, as he points out, civil lawsuits, you try to make a deal before you go into the whole court system, so I don't know that that would be really off off limits or what have you. Uh, but there is also a uh, March 10th letter sent by Cowboys lawyers to Shy Anderson, the former spouse of Charlotte Anderson, who is Jerry's daughter. Uh, Vanetta had this letter and instructs Anderson to preserve documents that would potentially prove a conspiracy among himself and others, potentially including some of his lawyers. Uh, gets into the voyeurism scandal. And, um, you know, basically this is just turning into a whole, like, he said, she said, they did, they did, they did. What do you think is going to happen with this? Do you think this just finally goes away, or do you think this is going to drag out and actually be a real problem for Jerry Jones? Well, I, I don't think Jerry Jones in his life has things that don't go away if he really wants them to. So I'm sure he'll figure a way out of it, and people will forget. I mean, you know, um, I, I point you to Robert Gra Kraft getting twisted off in a massage parlor. Uh, nobody really talks about that anymore. So um, I, I, I just did, but... Uh, but Jerry Jones, I mean, he'll he'll come through this. I'll never forget how you said that. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, but there's a whole thing about uh, just, you know, how the cheerleader scandal got popped off and the, the Anderson's involvement and all these lawyers. And uh, basically, Alexandra Davis, uh, her lawyer, pr provided a statement to uh, Van Nata. I would challenge Jerry Jones to put up any evidence that anyone demanded any money, period. It's a shame that Jerry Jones wants to further damage his own daughter by now claiming she is extorting him. I challenge them to put up any evidence that supports either one of these defamatory and false claims. And uh, Jones, uh, talking about the lawsuit at the uh, league meetings, just said it's a personal issue and would well, not have any further comment I'll on I'll it. say this. I don't know the truth, but I do know this, is that uh, when Don Van Natta gets involved and then yeah. there's somebody else that's involved and there's another story today uh, involved, I, I – uh, he can be as powerful as you can want to be, and I think in the end he's probably pretty much Teflon, but there seems to be more little brush fires than just – Rich Dalrymple. Well, now you yeah. got Charlotte Anderson's ex-husband who's, yeah. you know, extorting, according to Jones. And, like, I mean, that's how complicated we're now getting into this. Is Shy Anderson's becoming a character in this whole thing. If you burn enough people with your power, and even if some of this isn't true, people can become very vindictive if they have the truth, and they can become vindictive if they just want yeah. to create problems. Yeah, and, and I don't want to make a scene in any way. I'm, I'm, I'm letting Jerry off the hook if he's done any things. It just, you know... Things work out for billionaires. Yeah. I mean, look, things work out for them. Are they working out for Daniel Snyder? And they'll, look, ultimately, the worst thing that's going to happen to Daniel Snyder is he's going to get to sell the commanders for three times or four times what he paid for. That would take every human male part out of Jerry Jones's body if he had to sell the Cowboys. Yeah. So don't just act like that's not a big deal. I understand he's still going to make millions, maybe billions. Billions. But for Jerry Jones oh, to lose him. a friend, that would, it would kill him. he would, yes, that's what I'm saying. And this woman keeps saying that, you know, it's not about money, that uh, she's she just wants to be able to say publicly that she's Jerry Jones's daughter, and it's not about money, but obviously Jones and their side is alleging, no, it's, well, it's then about if you, money. Yeah, if, he, if he's right and she said, let's make a deal, then, then it is about money. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, it's all very confusing and, and just uh, kind of a bizarre story that we were not expecting, obviously, when that when that dropped. And so we'll just kind of see how uh, it continues to, to go from there. But, uh, 
yeah, Jerry Jones and as the world turns, uh, no doubt. Uh, all right, just a couple of uh, NFL type of notes uh, as we roll through here. Andy Dalton signs with the New Orleans Saints one year, $3 million deal. He will be the backup to Jameis Winston. And that means Taysom Hill will be uh, what Taysom Hill should be, which is a, a utility player. Utility player, player yeah. a, a Swiss Army knife. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. That's, I think it's a good move by the Saints. Yeah, I do too. I mean, they got to have a solid backup. And the Taysom Hill thing, that's kind of uh, – I think we've seen that that maximized. I don't know that we're going to get really more more juice out of uh, any more squeezes there. Baltimore Ravens have signed head coach John Harbaugh to a three year contract extension. Uh, he is, uh, uh, of course, at the NFL league meetings like everybody else right now. So there's a lot of announcements that are coming out of those. This will put him under contract through 2025, and uh, they had an eight nine season, not the best of, of Ravens seasons. But there's a lot of, of reasons to believe that uh, they will be just fine. Uh, they are the Baltimore Ravens, after all. I know they're one of the teams that Jalen Petrie has apparently set up a meeting with. But uh, Harbaugh, 59 years old, was in the final year of a, a four-year deal that he signed back in 2019. So uh, new new deal for uh, John Harbaugh in Baltimore. Best coach in the Harbaugh family. <laughs> My He's very solid. Uh, and I think Jim Harbaugh is good, too. But I think John Harbaugh uh, is you know what, uh, consistent. He, there's not a lot of drama around him. No. I mean, it doesn't mean they always – they haven't had tough losses and – there have not been meltdowns and big gains, but they, that, that organization, uh, you wish yours could run the way the Ravens run theirs and, and a- almost across the board. So uh, hard knocks, I don't know how many people out there still are, are avid viewers of that or not. Uh, maybe when your team pops up on there, you're, you're checking it out. But otherwise, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much of a casual audience they have of just people that, that constantly tune in, but it's been around for a while now, and the newest edition is, is whittling down the uh, the choices and uh, they've they've whittled it all down now. There was only three to begin with. Only three teams that were eligible to be chosen: uh, the New York Jets, Carolina Panthers, and Detroit Lions. And it will be the Detroit Lions on Hard Knocks this year. The team sending out a graphic uh, earlier this morning. Hard Knocks training camp with the Detroit Lions coming your way this summer. I think that'll be very interesting. I do. I mean, Dan Campbell. Is a is a character, a Clifton, Texas native, by the way, Dan Campbell. Uh, but, and Maggie, yeah, but uh, he's a, he's he's going to be interesting to watch. And to me, it'll be interesting to watch the behind the scenes of a franchise that uh, cannot get out of its own way, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. they cannot. You know, they are chasing their tail, stepping on their own. You know, whatever you say, but they cannot get out of their own way. Uh, Joe Buck, we know he's going off to. Uh to uh you know the world of big money and espn and all that leaving fox sports along with troy aikman so fox kind of has a a little bit of a debacle on their hands like who's our guy now like i mean we don't have joe and and troy anymore and we know how much joe buck did over uh at fox uh so there's you know a lot of rumors going on in the sports media world about who's going to be uh, filling in or, or, or replacing those guys. Uh, Andrew Marshan, who's he's one of the most locked in when it comes to sports media news, uh, he is pointed towards uh, Kevin Burkhart, uh, who would be an inside hire. Uh, he was the number two booth play-by-play man with Greg Olson serving as his color commentator. But uh, according to Mer- uh, Marshan, now Burkhart will be named the number one voice on Fox's NFL games. According to the Post, Burkhart and Fox are finalizing a new long-term contract, according to sources that will make him the voice of the network's Super Bowl. So basically, the number two booth is moving up to the number one booth with the departure of Joe and Troy Aikman. I, I think if I, I'd like to see them move Greg Olson up. I kind of enjoy Greg Olson. He's, he's okay. He's, yeah. He, yeah, he, you know, I think maybe he's he may not be fully ready to be the number one guy, but you know, you can try to play that game all you want. It's going to be tough to match everybody else. I'm very curious to see what they do on the World Series. You know, who who is it? I've I've heard rumors of of Joe Davis. Um, uh, who used to be Kansas? He, uh, was he used to be at Kansas? Joe, no, 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 um, no, Joe Davis. You know him. Yeah, I know Joe Davis. Yeah, he, yeah, he and I were on the same Baylor pregame show. And yeah, our career. He's now taken over for Vince Scully. So again, the Dodgers. Right? Our career. Yeah. Our careers are on the same arc. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now with uh, it, Marshan suggests that you know they could simply move up the number two booth. Uh, Burkhart looks like he's going to be like that's a, that's going to yeah, happen. Uh, yeah. But with the Olsen spot, that's where it could get a little trickier because if they stumble upon a name that's a bit bigger, uh, that would suddenly be showing interest in color commentating. Then you know, like if John Elway came out and said like, "Hey, I want to," you know what I'm saying? Like I if know, somebody I like big, Burkhart. 
I do. I think you have yeah, but I'm saying for Olsen's spot oh, yeah, for color yeah, commentary, yeah. if yeah. they find somebody that's a bit more star power, perhaps that you know he's he's suggesting that that's not a, a concrete thing, but Burkhart is, and uh, and you know Olsen, if it all just stays chalk, then he will be alongside as a number one booth uh, as well. So just a little bit of a sports media update there. Uh, Tiger Woods played a practice round at Augusta with his son uh, as the Masters oh, gets ready to get you underway. Stop him next week. You cannot stop. He doesn't need legs. Go ahead, Craig. We're just having a moment here. All right. Um, you having a moment? Yeah, yeah. he was just uh, playing around with his son. Uh, obviously suffered the, the big leg injuries in that car crash a year ago. Uh, and no idea on whether or not he's planning on trying to play in the, the Masters or not. But uh, uh, it would be the first time since February of 2021 if, he, in fact, he were to get out there on the course. But for right now, just playing with his son and uh, Augusta looming a little over a week away. I don't know if I can sleep the rest of the next I, few days. I'll, I'll be excited. If he if he tries to try out there and play, I mean, I don't think he, he's going to play his best round he's ever. He's not going to do it and embarrass himself. No, he would never but. do that. And I, But I would think even teeing off competitively again was something after the wreck and all of what you heard and what his legs uh, – went through not to mention everything else i never thought he would play again and then even after all the what he went through back in 08 9 10 11 all that never thought he would win another major he won tournaments and then won the masters so he uh just the fact he's there is it's awesome is is pretty awesome uh just a couple more notes albert pujols this was yesterday but uh signed a one-year deal with the st louis cardinals he's 42 years old so old pujols giving it at least one more season in major league baseball uh, i'm about to be suit too so uh <laughs> does that mean i can retire i don't have as much money I as wish, him. right but uh he yeah no I, he's said one more go with the cardinals his original team i think that'll be a nice little uh farewell tour for him he was with the dodgers yeah and I remember he came up in a couple of clutch moments. You could tell. I mean, it's it's you don't want to see him where you can't see Willie Mays catch a fly ball anymore. Well, or now with the universal yeah. DH, yeah. he's not playing in the field. You know, I'm, I'm just I don't want to see. I, yeah. I guarantee you, he didn't even bring a glove. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> just, that dude ain't playing a whole lot no, of field. He's not going to be a pinch runner. That's for sure. No. No, no I haven't seen all of the uh, ratings uh, releases from this past weekend, but I did want to mention St. Peter's and Purdue put up a really healthy number, highest rated Sweet 16 game since 2011, averaging 10.18 million viewers on CBS, which was uh, a bit better than the 2014 matchup with Kentucky and Louisville that had 10.09 10 million viewers. Uh, first time 15 seeds ever reached the Elite Eight, and I was told that we only care about the Blue Bloods, and those are the ones with all the fans and nobody cares. But uh, here was little old St. Peter's highest-rated Sweet 16 game in yep. over 10 years. Uh, and all due respect to Purdue, I don't think that they were drawing that crowd all by themselves. So, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of people out there, no matter how much we keep pushing towards the haves and giving them the haves as much as possible and just, you know, casting the have-nots to the side. Uh, good to see the have-not uh, – does bring some attention and um yeah i just wish st peter's we could have seen them go a little bit further but it was clear that they had about reached their max there by the end the, the st peter's would have been like cool runnings yeah. i mean they, they, oh, yeah, they would have seriously great, been yeah. the jamaican bobsled team going to that final four that was uh they just they, they, baycott what north carolina did they, they they didn't score the first four plus minutes they did like two or three times of those stretches of not scoring and and there was men among boys, no question about it. Yeah, so uh, we'll see about all the other ratings. I'll maybe mention that on Thursday or something like that as, as more of that comes out and becomes finalized because sometimes they put out the rough viewers and then there's like an addition later on. That's why I don't mention it as much just because it's not as exact as it, it once was or as quick as it once was. Uh, but, yeah, there's a, there's a few notes that are off the radar. Very well done. Oh, Tiger, one more, one Paul, more. Tigers uh, at Augusta. Uh, transfer portal announcement. Prince Pines, uh, former Baylor offensive lineman, announced he is headed to Oklahoma State. Announced that last up. night. So, it's uh, a mountain of a man. Yeah, he's a very huge young man. And uh, I know Matt Rule and them liked him. Uh, when they got him, he was a bit rough. Like, you know, needed to – like a piece of clay. You know, you need to mold him a little bit. But, uh, you know, good for him. Staying in the Big 12 and uh, headed to go play for the Cowboys. He, among others, went to Sam Houston State. Eliasa yep. Anderson, among others, went to – and won his national championship. And, and now he's back in the Big 12. When we come back, uh, he was promoted. Today, Alvin Brooks, the 